And then we come to the toms. You know, they used to say the more toms, the worse the drummer. I don't know if that's still a rule because most people seem to use reasonably small kits these days. The big cages with the 17 toms in them seem to have disappeared. Maybe I just don't mix that sort of band anymore or don't see them. Uh, generally speaking, your proper kit is your snare rack, possibly two racks and a floor. Uh, and that's normally what's considered toms. Miking them up, much the same as a snare. Um, you stay off the drum, you come in at an angle with a mic off the drum, makes sense. Again, if more over the drum, you'll get more bottom end, but it'll get hit by the drumstick. So this is a practical position. Now, advanced technique with toms, you can put a mic underneath as well, in the same as you do with a snare, have it out of phase. And I really, really guarantee that's the best tom sound you'll hear. It's a lot of channels, uh, and it, generally speaking, I don't do it, it's impractical, but if you're in a touring situation or you've got the channels of the time, marking top and bottom toms, you, you will hear the difference instantly. That's just a big, fat, really true sound. Single mic on the top is relatively thin. For all intents and purposes it works, but when you roll around the toms and they're just on the top, it is, you can hear it and it's there, but if you had the two, then the body, the full body of the toms comes out. Uh, toms like this with no, no bottom skin, you can, people have tried sticking the mic up underneath them and it gives a fairly distinctive uh, sound. Again, very little body, but you certainly hear the attack and hear the skin from up under there. Uh, I don't know that it's a particularly useful sound. Um, but, you know, in some situations it has been done and it looks quite good, of course, keeps the mics hidden out of the way. Um, the other way of doing toms is clamps, uh, which I don't like, the heavy clamps. Again, this is, um, they affect the sound of the drum is the reason I'm not so keen. And I have met a couple of drummers who think the same thing. They don't or won't let you even put clamps on their kit for that reason. And it makes sense to me. I mean, it's like a weighting on the drum. Uh, if the rubber clamp that clips onto the skin in any way, then it really will affect the tone of the drum quite uh, immediately. Um, the compromise is the little clips, the little mics on the little goosenecks that clip on, they're presumably so light that uh, they're not going to affect the sound of the drum. But they're still sitting there getting vibrated with the drum. I'm not sure what effect that has on the sound, but there's something uh, appealing to me about having the mic off the, off the drum uh, so it is independent. So the sound of the drum, I guess, is not impeded by the mic hanging off it. And it's allowed to develop fully before it gets to the mic, rather than being influenced by the, the direct vibration. Um, and the floor tom, much the same applies. Uh, again, if you, could, if you could afford the two mics, or if you could do it, you, you will hear the difference. Uh, if not, you really just put the mic on top uh, and listen to it. There is a little more scope for condensers with toms, because you can get them very close and you can still get right in the skin and you know, I don't know, keep a little bit of distance from the cymbals. You're going to get spill, but you do get a nice attack to the sound.